Today we're going to do the free response question from 1982, the second one from mechanics for the AP Physics C test. The question says, a car of mass m moves with an initial speed v0 on a straight horizontal road. The car is brought to rest by braking in such a way that the speed of the car is given as a function of time t by v equals v0 squared minus rt over m all to the one half power, where r is a constant. And here's a picture of the car going down a horizontal road. Okay, so part A says develop an equation that expresses the time rate of change of kinetic energy. So kinetic energy, we know, is equal to one half mv squared. And when they gave us the v, which is a function of time, which is so v of t is equal to v naught squared minus r t over m to the one half power, which is also equal to the square root of v naught squared minus r t over m. So when I first did this problem, I thought it said find the change in kinetic energy. So I thought they wanted me to do v final minus v initial. But because the v final is zero because it's going to rest, and the initial they give us is v naught. But then I realized that they want us to find the time rate of change. And rate of change is just another word for the derivative of ke, or kinetic energy. So dke, so that'd be equal to one half mass, and then now we put in our velocity, so the square root of v naught squared minus rt over m squared. So the squared take, gets rid of the square root, so it's equal to 1 half m v naught squared minus rt over m. But now we have to take the derivative of this, so now it's equal to so now this, this is constant, so we keep this out here, 1 half m, and then the v naught squared minus rt has a 1 power. So we multiply the 1 in front, and that whole thing goes to the 0 power, because you take the 1, it goes to the 1 less power when you take the derivative. But now, because of, uh, we're taking the derivative, we have to take the derivative of the inside. So v naught is a constant, so v naught squared just goes to zero when we multiply it. So it'd be zero minus, and then the derivative of rt over m, t is our variable, so uh, the derivative of rt over m would be minus r over m, because t is to the first power, so the one goes to the front when you multiply it, and t goes to zero. So it's zero minus rm. So now it's equal to one half m, this goes to 1 times 0 minus negative r over m. So now it goes to 1 half m negative r over m. So now the m's cancel out, cancel out. And now the derivative of ke is equal to negative r over 2. So that is the expression for the time rate of change in kinetic energy. So part B says determine the time it takes to bring the car to a complete stop. So this means when v is equal to 0. And we know v is equal to v naught squared minus rt over m to the 1 half, so that's a given. So now when we put this together, 0 is equal to, because 0 is equal to velocity, v naught squared minus rt over m to the 1 half, because we're setting this equal to 0, because we want to find t when the velocity goes to 0, or it makes a complete stop. So then we can change this to 0 equals square root of v naught squared minus rt over m. And now, square both sides. Now it just becomes an algebra problem. So, 0 equals v naught squared minus rt over m. <coughs> so we plus rt to get rid of rt on this side. 
plus RT on this side. So it's equal to B naught squared is equal to RT over M. Multiply by M. Multiply by M. Because M is a constant. So now it's M V naught squared is equal to RT. Remember, they told us R is a constant too. So now we divide by R. Divide by R. So now T is equal to M V naught squared over R. So this is the time it takes to bring the velocity to zero and the car to make a complete stop. Okay, so part C says develop an equation for the acceleration of the car as a function of time. So now we're trying to find acceleration. Alright, so once again, the velocity is equal to v naught squared minus rt over m to the one half power. Okay, so that's velocity as a function of time. So now we know acceleration is equal to the, vol the change in velocity over the change in time, or acceleration is equal to the derivative of velocity. So, a is equal to v prime. So now that means we just have to take the derivative of the velocity function to find acceleration. Okay, so now dv over dt equal to, so when we take the derivative, we take, put the one half in front, one half, and this whole thing in parentheses goes to the one last power, so one half minus one, negative one half, and now we have to multiply by the derivative of the things in the inside. So v naught squared, that's a constant, so the derivative of a constant is zero, minus the derivative of rt over m, just r over m, because the t, it has a one power, one in front, t goes to zero. t goes to the zero power, which is equal to one, so z minus r over m. So now, dv dt is equal to one half v naught squared minus rt over m, to negative one half over negative r over m. So dv dt is equal to negative r over 2 square root of v squared, v naught squared, minus rt over m multiplied by m. So now acceleration is equal to negative r over 2m square root v naught squared minus rt over m. That's the acceleration. Okay, so part D says, on the axis below, sketch the magnitude of the breaking force as a function of time t. Okay, so we know acceleration is equal to sum of the forces over the mass. So sum of the forces, let's draw a free body diagram now. So here's the car. So the car has a force of gravity going down or mg, and the car has a force normal from the ground up on it, which is force normal. So these two forces are uh, cancel each other out, and there's no force going to the right in the x direction or the positive in the x direction, but there is a braking force that's trying to slow it down, just force braking, and this is the force that we want. So as we can see, the only sum of the forces in the x direction are the braking force. So now, we put this here, so acceleration is equal to force braking over mass. So now, we found the acceleration uh, in the last part, so acceleration is equal to negative r over 2m square root v naught squared minus r t over m. So now we set that equal to f b over m, so negative r 
over 2m square root of v naught squared minus r t over m is equal to f b over f b over m. Multiply by m. Multiply by m. These m's cancel out. So f b is equal to negative r over 2 square root of v naught squared minus r t over m. Okay, so now we have that. So now we need to know where the force starts off when the time is zero. So we just take this and we plug it in. So force b when time is equal to zero is equal to negative r over 2 square root v naught squared minus 0 because t is 0. So that goes to negative r over 2 v naught. So now we know that the force of breaking is equal to negative r over 2 v naught when time is zero. At time zero forces negative r over 2 v naught. So now we need to find out where the force is at time is infinity, like some top, uh, time uh, far away. So what we're going to do is force of breaking is equal to negative r over 2 square root v naught squared minus r t over m, where t is going to infinity. It's equal to negative r over 2 square root v naught squared minus infinity, which goes to negative r over 2 square root of negative infinity. So this, we know, can't be done, negative infinity. But force breaking is getting so big that we can't find the limit because as t, because as t goes to infinity, the force of breaking also goes toward infinity. So force of breaking is equal to infinity at t equals infinity. So there is no limit to t because it can keep getting bigger. So now we put that on our axis. t goes to infinity. So now we know that it's going to get bigger So that's what the graph will look like. It starts at negative r over 2 v naught at 0, and it gets bigger until it reaches t equals infinity, and it just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger because there is no limit. So that is what the graph looks like of the breaking force.